Good morning, Pine Ridge, and uh, happy Good Friday. Um, before I get started, I just want to let you know that at the end of this message, I'm going to invite you to take communion with me. So uh, if, I'll encourage you right now to uh, pause the video and get some bread and juice or wine if you prefer that, and then uh, come back and get started. Welcome back. So I was wondering, have you ever given any thought as to what your last words would be or should be? Uh, wondering if you might go with something funny, something deep. Most likely, if you're like me, you'd probably want to think of something heartfelt to say to your loved ones. Uh, but it got me thinking and wondering, you know, what are what are some of the the most famous last words uh, that people have given? I heard a joke when I was younger that Socrates' last words were, "I drank what." Um, Hopefully you know some history if you get that joke. But anyway, uh, some famous, letters, famous last words that I discovered. Bob Marley said, money can't buy life. Which is pretty deep when you think about it. Leonardo da Vinci said, I have offended God and mankind because my work did not reach the quality it should have. Somebody was a bit of a perfectionist, da Vinci. This one's kind of sad. Sam Cooke, musician, his last words were, lady, you shot me. Groucho Marx, always a comedian, right to the last, he said, die, my dear? Why, that's the last thing I'll do. Karl Marx said, last words are for fools who haven't said enough. You played yourself there, Karl. Probably my favorite one I found out of the bunch was from Pancho Villa, who apparently his last words to a bunch of reporters were, don't let it end like this. Tell them I said something important. So I'm just sort of passing the buck down there for Pan Pancho Villa. But I would have to say that the greatest last words of anyone in history have to belong to Jesus. Now this is a, a debatable statement on a couple of different counts. First of all, it's the first issue is whether they actually count as last words because of his resurrection. You know, Jesus actually had last words or had words beyond his last words. But for the sake of this sermon, we'll, we'll count them. The second issue is that because there are different accounts of Jesus written by, by different authors who had focused on different things, we actually have um, multiple last words. But today we're going to look at the last words uh, that, that come from John's account of Jesus. So just a couple of short verses here, uh, three of them, um, starting John chapter 19, verses 28 to 30. This is Jesus who has been on the cross for a number of hours now. It says, Jesus knew that his mission was now finished. Uh, this, this, the reason that he came to earth in the first place, the reason that he was born as a baby in a manger, uh, this, this whole life came to fruition in this moment. I mean, this was the reason that he came. Uh, sure, he came and he healed people. I mean, he did miracles. You know, he fed 5,000 people. He walked on water. He did all kinds of amazing things. But the real reason he came was now accomplished. His mission was finished. And to, to fulfill scripture, he said, I am thirsty. Now, most people think that this is probably referring to uh, a verse in Psalm chapter 26. Um, sorry, Psalm chapter 69. Um, what I think is interesting about this is that it tells us something significant about Jesus. It's that he was fully God, yes, but he was also fully man. Uh, Jesus, anyone in Jesus' situation right now would be thirsty. I mean, he's been hanging on the cross. He's been, he's been pulling himself up so he could breathe for, for a number of hours now. He's almost dead. Of course he's thirsty. In fact, he was offered uh, a drink earlier, and this was this was uh, some a drink that probably would have had a bit of a narcotic effect on him and would have dulled the pain and, and suffering. But but Jesus said, you know, he he had a mission to accomplish, and so he wanted to make sure uh, that he 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 went he was able to go ahead with that. But now that the mission's accomplished, everything is done. Uh, he wants a drink, and probably he wants to clear his throat for what's about to what what's about to come next. A jar of sour wine was sitting there, so they soaked a sponge in it 
put it on a hyssop branch, and held it up to his lips. Now, when I was younger, I thought this sounded pretty disgusting. Uh, some people refer to it as vinegar wine. I do not like vinegar. You know, when, when I walk into a place and they've used vinegar to clean the glass or something like that, uh, I, I think it's an awful smell. I just, I don't enjoy it. People who put it on their, their fries, not for me, especially if it's malt vinegar, not, not at all. But uh, I always thought, is this like they were pulling a prank on him? Like trying to make him suffer as much as possible in the last moment, giving him sour wine. But after doing some study on it, uh, what I discovered was is that this was probably a, a jar of wine that was used for the soldiers. I mean, they didn't want to give them real wine because they could get drunk and then not do their job properly. And so they gave them this, this sour wine or vinegar wine. And really what it was, it was it's probably just a little bit of vinegar wine, but it's a lot of water. And so really what this is about is it's about quenching thirst. Uh, the, the soldiers would use it because it was, you know, it was hot work crucifying people. And, and so they needed a drink. And we know from some other, or other passages of scripture that, that Jesus has, had just made a statement and people misunderstood it. And they thought that he was calling for Elijah to come save him. And so uh, they wanted to see, you know, if Elijah was actually going to come. And so they, probably what was going on here is they, they wanted to keep Jesus alive as long as possible to see, you know, if, if something miraculous was going to happen, if Elijah was going to come out of nowhere. But they gave him some wine. And the, the reason they put it on a, a sponge is you, you can't exactly give someone uh, who's up on a cross a cup. And so they gave him this, this drink on a sponge. And he, he took just enough of it to, to be able to, well, to fulfill scripture, but also probably to, to clear his throat. And when he had tasted it, verse 30, he said, it is finished. And then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. So the last words of Jesus are, I am thirsty, and it is finished. It is finished. The mission that he came to accomplish is now over. The reason he came was to reconcile God to man. The mission of Jesus was to save his people from their sins. And so when Jesus says, it is finished, it means that you and I don't need to try to do what we could never do, which is to earn our spot in heaven. It is finished means that the job is done, that all that is left is to, is to confess and believe that Jesus finished the job. It is finished. The word that Jesus used, the original word that Jesus used was to teleste, which means paid in full. And so this was, this was actually uh, a word that people would put on receipts in the first and second century. Uh, it, it had a, the sense of fulfilling or paying a debt. And so Jesus paid the debt of sin that we owed and finish the work of the cross. Jesus' final words are, it is finished. Jesus' final words are saying that it is paid in full, that everything that you've done wrong in your life has now been covered by the blood of Jesus. And then scripture tells us that he, he bowed his head, and this was not bowing his head in defeat, it's more just laying his head to rest. And then he gave up his spirit which means that no one took his life from him. He chose to lay his head, to, to lay his life down. In fact, John chapter 10, verse 17 to 18, 18 says, Jesus said, I lay my life down and I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. Jesus' final words are, I'm thirsty and it is finished. I think it's important for us to embrace those words as well. I mean, when Jesus, uh, when the worst of it was over, he said, I'm thirsty. And the same is true for us. If we can come to the cross of Christ and say, I'm thirsty for everything that Jesus has for me, well, then the worst is over because your security is assured in heaven. If you believe truly that it is finished, that, that, that Jesus has completed the task that he came that for the mission that he came to, to fulfill, then the worst is over. If we can come to the cross of Christ and say, I'm thirsty, well, then we're really embracing the words that Jesus gave us in John chapter 7 when he said, Anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scriptures declare, rivers of living water will flow from his heart. 
I thirst for everything Jesus can give me because I believe that it is finished. I believe that the debt is paid in full. If you can come to the cross of Christ and say those things, that, that I'm thirsty for everything you have for me and I believe that it is finished, then you can have freedom in Christ. There's another time that Jesus told us to drink from him. On the night that he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took a cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. If you have some bread and wine or juice with you, I'm going to pray and then I'll invite you to join me as we share communion. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for sending your Son. We want to thank you for the sacrifice that he made, that he chose to lay his life down. We want to thank you that he offered us a quenching for the thirst that we have that he became the perfect sacrifice for us, that he became the perfect drink for us. And so Lord, now we, we eat this bread and we drink this juice and we recognize him for who he is, our Lord and Savior. The one who came with a mission and was able to say at the end that it is finished. So we proclaim his name as our Lord until he comes back. In your name, amen. Let's eat and drink together. As a benediction, I've chosen Ephesians chapter 1, verses 6 to 8. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear Son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his Son and forgave our sins. He has showered his kindness on us, along with all wisdom and understanding. Well, until we meet again, Pine Ridge, take care of each other.